I can't wait to give up drugs. I can't wait. This quiet South London suburb is home to Cassie and her five-year-old son. Hello, Mama. But something else runs her life. And that's really strong. When you have a bit of white injected, it goes like right round the body, fast. Cassie's tried to give up drugs before. She's failed every time. But can a radical treatment on the other side of the world finally get her clean? Knew it was going to be the most difficult detox in the world. As long as the body is screaming for drugs, the mind can never be free and calm. For the last 18 months, Cassie's been staying with her parents to try and provide some stability for her son. I promise you, I, it's OK, as soon as you come back from school, I'll be here. Ooh. All right. Ooh. Come on. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Take him in, Ollie. Today was her son's first day back at school, but Cassie's need for a fix means she has to leave. I hate having to f leave him all the time and do all this I've got to sort all this out before I can do anything, you know? Watch your head coming in. For God's sake, how many times are you going to say that? Is that written off? You get some tools up. I'm, tr I'm trying. Cassie's to boyfriend, it's... Paul, is also a heroin addict. It stinks. It's not cooked up properly, is it? That's the best I'm going to get at the moment. Cassie has been an addict since she was 15, but her problems didn't start there. When I was about 13, I had an eating disorder. Well, I used to take loads of laxatives as well, like 50 a day. It took me about four hours to eat half a bowl of cornflakes. My arms are all messed up and, and what have you. And because I, I used to cut my arms when I was younger and um, I just did it with bits of glass or whatever. And the thing is, is that people think, oh, that must hurt. It doesn't hurt at all. It doesn't. You just, when you do it, you just, you feel like, it sounds cliche, but I sense a relief. It's you feel, you just feel a little bit better and you feel a sense of release. At just 15 years old, damaged and depressed, she ran away from home and spent a year on the streets. It was here she discovered heroin. <laughs> Cassie's parents have helped her into numerous detoxes and rehabs. They all failed. Now she spends her days with Paul, using drugs on Wasteland or at his London bedsit. There's no question in my mind mentally made to give up drugs. It's just the sickness that I'm worried about. That's what it is. There's no, I can't wait to give up drugs. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'd rather die than stay like this. Like, I know before I've been kidding myself and, like, I don't have to kid anyone now. I'm not bothered what people think. If I wasn't ready to give up, I'd just say... Oh, but I really, really am, and I'm saying that for myself, for me. I'm saying it cos I want to. I'm gonna shut them all. Shut them all. Tam Krabok Monastery lies in the mountains of central Thailand. Its rigorous program, a blend of Buddhist self-discovery and monastic discipline, have seen it open its doors to addicts from all over the world. Mike Sarson is a former NHS drug worker. 
In 1992, he set up the charity East West Detox to take addicts to Tam Krabok. In the West, we tend to suppress everything with medication as, as a quick fix. In the East, uh, Tam Krabok, they enable the demons to come out. And unless the demons come out, then you're stuck and not going anywhere. Now Mike has agreed to help Cassie. Cassie has hit rock bottom and she's ready. And it's, it's only then that really it's worth engaging in any treatment at all. Today, Mike has arranged a meeting for East West Detox volunteers. Jail or jail, basically, because... Uh, Cassie's here to meet another addict Mike is planning to take out with her. 23-year-old Sarah. When I first met Sarah, she was injecting into her groin, crack cocaine, but even more concerning, uh, Subutex. Subutex blocks the effects of heroin, but not the cravings. Like many addicts, Sarah has just moved on to another drug. Tam Krabok is now her best chance of getting clean. If I don't go to Thailand, do you know what I mean? I'm not gonna, this is, this is like my life. Right, I'm going to be stuck in England injecting crack into my groin for the rest of my life. Tell me if any coppers are coming, right? Sarah and her boyfriend Dave have been sleeping rough for over a year. Now this is the same ritual for a heroin addict. But it's crack, right. so I've still got the same habit, well, really. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I hate these needles. Where are you going, Dave? Yeah, well, I, I need some light. Oh, God, I can't see. Ow. Sarah's life used to be so different. Raised in Japan, she became a well-paid translator. First, she got a cocaine habit. Then a friend offered her heroin. Finally, she was fired, and then the money ran out. Sad, really. Uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's a sad life, really. I just don't do anything every day. You know, I speak fluent Japanese, and I'm not using it, and... I know, I just, if I don't go soon, I, I don't think I'd last very long. Both Sarah and Cassie know that if they get clean, they can't stay with drug addicted partners. Cassie's been spending more and more time at Paul's bedsit. Hoping they can stay together, Paul has promised to get clean while Cassie's in Thailand. Paul, you reckon after this, yeah, you are never going to touch drugs ever, ever again? You can never say never. Yeah. But I'll never have a habit again, trust me. I'm really worried about you, to be honest, Paul. Have you ever tried to just stop? Um, I've never wanted to. I'm just worried about... You know, what if some d starts knocking at the door, saying, when you're really sick, saying, do you want this or, well, or that? the thing, I'll be in a detox, isn't it? Yeah, but you said you're going to quit when I go. Because you know when you're really, really sick, Paul, it doesn't matter what you say in advance, does it? It's like you're in hell and you, you do anything to get out of that, don't you? But you seriously reckon that you do it? I will do it, yeah. In Reading, Sarah's recently been given a place in a women's hostel, but she prefers to sleep outside with Dave. He's done detoxes before, but has always ended up back on the street. If Sarah's detox succeeds, these may be their last few days together. Yeah, they're drying out. It is drying, babe. It'll be fine for tonight, all right? Give it a couple of more hours and they'll be completely dry. Yeah, it's quite sad, really, to think that that's all you've got. Wet blankets. 
I mean, he's lived in Reading for 30 years and the council can't house him. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I think it's awful. I've been all my life. I know, and it's terrible, David. I'm yeah. not getting any younger, am I? Mm. No, you're not. And I don't want to see you like one of these drunks on the street in 10 years' time, you know? Mm, that ain't gonna be like that, ain't well, I hope not. I bloody hope not, Dave. <laughs> Just a few days later, it's leaving day. Sarah has spent her last night in the car park with Dave. But now they must say goodbye. Perhaps forever. Give me a kiss. Oh, you're going all gimp now, stop it. Oh, I love you. I love you, David. <laughs> stop it, man. I'll be here. I'll be here. Make sure you're here. Huh? Make sure you're here. <laughs> you got a smoke on you? Cassie spent her last night at Paul's bedsit. That's good to be supportive, isn't it? Of me, eh? Oh, man, we know, it? we know what we both want, don't we? Yeah. Yeah? Mm. You're going to tell her. I'm worried about going there. Oh, yeah, it's scary, isn't it? Yeah. But you just think of what's ahead. This is to be Sarah and Cassie's home for the next 28 days. Helped by Thai and Western monks, they must purge themselves, both physically and mentally. First rule of Buddhism is, is there is suffering. It's just realising it and understanding it. If you understand it enough, it might stop. Every new arrival must first hand over their passports and provide a full drug history to Swiss monk Pra Hans, responsible for foreign patients. Can I know your names? Cassie. Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. Duration, so I just put how long I've been on the gear. Yes. Is it right, not Rhino? Right now. Valium, Rhino, Valium, Rhino, 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 <laughs> Only a few personal possessions are allowed in the compound after they've been searched for drugs. That's for my son. That's for my boy. I'm having that full stop. There's nothing in there, trust me. It's just beans. Just beans. <laughs> Everyone has to wear the pajamas, even Cassie. I'm going to have a roll up now. So that was all pretty quite stressful actually. They've gone completely through my tobacco pouches. Suits you. Colour? Yes. Shut up. I'll come out dancing, Cassie. Taking a piss. Before the treatment begins, Cassie, Sarah, and the other new patients must take the satcha, a sacred vow. The satcha is a declaration somebody makes. No more. No more. Never to touch drugs anymore for a lifetime. This is the foundation. Cocaine. Cocaine. Board lab. Put love. Come to why. Come to why. Sacha. Sacha. 
Now the detox can begin. Five days of the monastery's herbal medicine. All right. The medicine has this incredible capacity to withdraw poisons from everywhere in the body, and basically from the blood. The medicine is painful unless it's expelled after a few minutes. With the aid of a bucket of water, Cassie and Sarah must make themselves sick. <laughs> Sarah is unable to vomit, so is allowed to leave. But for Cassie, it's the first time she's made herself sick since her eating disorder, which sparked off her drug problems. Oh, Cass, throw that bucket away, darling. I did it earlier, please. <laughs> Sarah and Cassie have been given a room with female Thai addicts. For women, the rooms are locked at 9 p.m. until dawn. Detoxing drug addicts might not sleep for days. The long nights will be one of the toughest parts of their treatment. Next morning, Mike has a meeting with the volunteers he's brought with him. We're going to be all recovering from our uh, jet lag. Yeah. Bex from England and Natalie, who lives at Tamkrabok, will be supporting Sarah and Cassie. Mike has to make it clear to them that they mustn't get too close. It's just not on because the whole philosophy, you know, part of Tamkrabok is that it's self-help and we can't be there rescuing people all the time. It's just important for us to have the boundaries set up. OK? To ease the impending pain of withdrawal, patients are taken to the monastery's herbal saunas. Today is Sarah and Cassie's first go. It's kind of weird because it makes you feel like we're a bit relaxed, but it's like, because it's, I, I feel a bit dizzy, it makes me feel a bit lightheaded. So let's sit down. You know what? It does something to my chest. What does it do to It does to my chest. Like, I've got this pain here. And it eases the pain. And there's people from all over the world coming here. Switzerland, Germany. You know, it's quite, it's quite amazing, really. Just goes to show that there's a real problem with drugs everywhere. And people are turning to drugs. Because I don't know how to deal with life, maybe, you know? You're looking much better. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I feel much worse. I know. All the stigma and the guilt. guilt. Christy is from Dublin. He's lead singer of the Irish rock band Aslan. He came to Mike after the failure of conventional heroin detoxes. You know, growing up, I drank alcohol. You know, when I was 16, drank my first alcohol. 
tried hash, tried cocaine, tried, you know, drugs. But when I took heroin, I felt I was home. You know, I felt, now I know how every, now I know how you wake up in the morning. Now I know how everybody feels in the morning. The hole just disappeared, right? So the next day, I woke up with a choice. I could either have the hole or I could have no hole. I could have that hole filled. The heroin fit, closed that hole for me, you know? Anyway. There's something very spiritual about here, though. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Senior monk Pra Hans came to Tam Krabok 15 years ago. Having experimented with drugs himself, he feels that addiction is a search for mental and spiritual peace. Addiction is a reaction to something. Addiction covers something. The addicts kind of try, by very impermanent and very destructive way, to reach kind of inner states they could only re realize and reach after a long period of inner, inner work. This is Sarah and Cassie's first meditation class. For Hans, it's a tool for strengthening the mind against addiction. It, it is a training of the willpower, it's a training of the focus, and it's, it's a training of, of, of being relaxed. It all helps to, to, to take control, to take the steering wheel. I feel totally present here. Let everything that is heavy and dark and worrying sink down to the earth. Melt down to the earth. The earth knows what to do with it. So you can feel light and carried by the ground. Now we take a few deep in and out breathings, imagining that the air comes in through a little hole on top of the head, then fills the whole body. We focus on our breathing, everything coming from the outside world, everything coming from the mind. Take it as impermanent phenomena that come and go. Oh, let it come. Let it be what it is and let it go. Let it come and let it be what it is. Let it go. Many, many patients, only by having lived a phase of drugging, they really hit the hard ground and they start waking up. What is life about? What, what am I about? What is my life about? And without that, they, will be, they would be like normal consumers sitting in front of the TV and then dying and, and asking themselves, oh, was that it? Is that already all? Of the hundreds of people the monastery treats every year, some take a satcha to stay and become monks. Some take it for a month, some for years. They must live simply and work around the monastery, practicing the monastery's teachings of discipline and self-reliance until they are ready to return to the outside world. Pra Richard came here from Leeds a year ago. I came here to a detox from heroin and crack cocaine. Straight from being a patient here, I uh, ordained. Uh, no time outside, just became a monk and never looked back. He's had time to become an expert on the vomiting. The amount of water they have to drink, a bucket of water, is uh, sometimes a bit daunting for them. You know, they look at it and uh, just just let all these thoughts come in that they can't do it and can't drink a bucket of water. And oh, well, you can because <laughs> many people have done it. I quite like it actually. It's just makes me want to do things, be able to do things, you know. And not especially after I've done it, but the morning after, I'm just, I'm full of life, full of life. Yeah. And hungry as well, actually. So. Mm. Oh. 
Sometimes I have to do two buckets. Oh. The water is easy, but at the beginning, all right, the patient there, he's saying I can't drink the water. Well, I can't give up heroin now. <laughs> it's the second day, and Cassie and Sarah's second dose of medicine. <coughs> make it easier to vomit them. <laughs> So far, Cassie is managing it well. So is Christy. <coughs> but Sarah's still having trouble. As soon as you hand down some more water, wash your hands with. Go, go. Yeah. Ram your fist down your throat. You've got to. Two fingers. Two fingers. And when you're sitting there suffering with the stomach that's too full. <laughs> and that's what we want you to do. <laughs> After a few hours, with Bex's help, Sarah finally brings up the medicine. That's it. Good girl. Oh. What's that? Hours pass, but Sarah's pain just gets worse. <laughs> Now she's starting to withdraw. How are you feeling, sir? Chest is killing me. Sorry? Under here, it's killing me. It really hurts. I'm worried because I have pancreatitis and I've got a cyst inside my stomach still. You know, I didn't check it out before I came. So unorganised before I came. Sarah, Sarah. Proceeds from, from Bob, all drugs are banned from the compound. If the monks find out Cassie has paracetamol, she could be expelled from the monastery. Cassie told us that she got the paracetamol from another patient. But she herself hasn't started to withdraw yet. It'll take another two days for us to find out why. Paracetamol won't do much, but it lets Sarah move around enough to get some fresh air. If you're detoxing, you don't sleep. It's the start of some very long nights for Sarah. It's just like this pain, it's so sharp. I'm just really, really down with it now. It's getting to me. After two days without sleep, Sarah's pain begins to fade. On the morning of her fourth day, the monks agree to take her to the monastery clinic for a checkup. I've been sleepless nights, so you know I've been waking up with pain in my chest, and it really hurts. It's a niggly pain, so I'm going to see the doctor about that. Cassie's come to register with the clinic, but still hasn't started to feel ill. But while they're waiting to see the doctor, Sarah makes it clear that something is wrong. Every five minutes you're going to the toilet, you're going outside because you've got chest pains and someone's lying there sound asleep, so lovely, bubbly in their own little world. 
doubt they're red. Am I next? While Cassie has her checkup, Sarah tells us what's been happening. Well, uh, she's really pissed me off, actually, because she sneaked in um, some Valium. I mean, the girl is coming off heroin, methadone, Valium. You know, I mean, you are going to really, really feel ill. And she's not reached that stage yet. There was a plane outside, my reflex is a jump. It's been getting on my nerves because I don't need somebody next to me, you know, where I'm trying so hard to detox and then there's someone next to me that's actually, you know, still taking drugs and sort of, like, glazed eyes and happy-go-lucky, you know? Everything's a breeze. What is the point in her coming here? Does she really want to come off drugs and, you know, think she has to sort of realise that first? Yeah. I believe that she's still got something stashed away. So they're checking on that now, I think, while she's at the doctor's. Oh. Take drugs into the patient's compound is not only against the rules, it's against the whole philosophy of the monastery. That suffering can only be overcome if it's faced head on and alone. It's been decided to let Cassie stay, but the monks have searched her things and confiscated any remaining Valium. Once we're alone, she decides to tell us why she brought them in. I think what it was, was the fact that... I just can't bear... It's not, it's not, the it's, it's just the whole body is just screaming and screaming. And it wasn't, to, it wasn't at all to get out of my face, at all. It was to take one to sleep, you know, and it genuinely was like that. But they've taken them off me now, so I'm f I can't bear the thought of f I hate it, I really hate it. I hate it. I hate it. You see, it is agony. And you know I'll be fine in a couple of days. And I'll be strong, do you know what I mean? It's just I've got to go through this. But, you know, I've got, I'm saying that I have got a big habit, you know? And it's going to be a tough ride. It's the fifth day of the detox and their final vomit. Finally, Sarah vomits properly for the first time. Cassie's vomited quickly and has asked to leave. Her withdrawal is beginning. Heroin just creates this sort of bubble around you. You're in a false environment, a false world. So once you take that away, I think the only way to describe it is that you've just you've just knocked the wall down and the real world comes at you at a million miles an hour. How are you feeling?
It's just tiredness of all of us, you know. I don't want, I don't, I don't want to go home because I've got nothing to go home to. Where are you going? Freezing. I just feel like I'm going to throw up as well. I just feel like I want to die. The five-day medicine detox has finished. Sarah and Cassie's bodies may have expelled the drugs, but the treatment is far from over. The next 23 days are all about reflection and rebuilding. Predictions about life and death, going down the spiral, losing everything that is material, and then the whole character. At the end, they lose their lives. But the problem is rather about waking up in life. In the dead of night, far from her old life, Sarah's mind is clearing. She's starting to look frankly at her past. I know what I've been through and I know what I don't want to go back to. I've lived on the street, I've lived in car parks, and I'm sick of it, you know, needles, junkies. People on the street begging. I've really, really had enough of it. I can't go back to that life ever again. Christy hasn't slept since he got to the monastery a week ago. As the nights drag on, he too is forced to consider his life with fresh eyes. Oh, God. When's this gonna f end? In all your f***ing mad behaviour, you don't really realise how much damage you're doing. And everybody that has anything to do with you is hurt and damaged by your behaviour. Everybody, everybody. Oh, no. Did I choose to do it like this? Oh, God. I'm going to be wasting childhood sweethearts and it all come on top you know and she'd, she'd lose it and I'd say right 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 look I get a bottle of methadone and I'm gonna detox she'd be happy and as soon as she start letting her guard down I'd start f***ing around again I think she's going to keep forgiving and keep forgiving and keep forgiving until eventually you just push the boat out too far. And then the last time it happened, and I said, look, look, don't worry, you know, I'm going to get a bottle of methadone. She says, take your methadone, don't take your methadone. I don't give a f anymore. Just do what you have to do. Get out of my face because I don't need it anymore. I never, ever thought I'd arrive at that point. the semen of the devil. That's what heroin is. and people start to sleep. We went into the compound, expecting to find it quiet and peaceful at last. Feeling the heat, everyone has come together to clean out the old pond in the compound. Nearly everyone. It smells. Um, it's quite sludgy. It's all right, it's not all right. Come on, Pat. Yeah, all right, I'm coming. I'm not, never going to get out again. Yeah. 
After a few more days, Cassie has allowed her first phone call. Her boyfriend Paul has agreed to give up drugs while she's at the monastery. The future of their relationship depends upon him keeping his word. Hello? Hi, it's me. You all right, baby? Oh, I miss you so much. You don't know the hassle I've had to go through to get this phone call. Paul. But anyway, the point is, as I'm ringing you, have you come off the drugs? What's, what are you saying then? What are you doing? What does that mean? So what are you doing then? What, what, have you clocked out? I want the honest answer. What does that mean? But I'm, I'm not interested in that. It's as simple and cut and dry, and I'm telling you now, I cannot see you if you're on drugs. You know that anyway. Right, so I want to know, because if I know you've been using today or yesterday, I've got to finish with you today on the phone now. I don't think you understand what I'm trying to tell you. I've been in bits. So what are you clean then? Well, this is what I'm saying. I don't ever want this again, yeah? That's why I'm... Yeah, I'm coming now. OK. All right, I love you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Straight away, I said, right, tell me straight. H have you used this one? He went, yeah, I'll tell you honestly, because I'm not going to lie to you, I have. And I've just got hope that he's trying his hardest. Because if he, if he genuinely... I'm talking even if he's not clean for a week, we're over. There's now a week left to go. Cassie and Sarah are taken to meditate at the monk's nightly chanting. Sarah's been feeling much better. She's been using the time to reflect on her life and battle her addiction face to face. But Cassie's been having a hard time at the monastery. She's had difficulty with the self-discipline and honest reflection demanded by the treatment. Next morning, she tells us how the hours alone have affected her. I've suffered from depression quite a bit and I've felt I've come up against brick walls all the time and the other night I'm being once I was in here, if I'd have had a piece of glass I would have done my wrists in. It consumes you and it gets bigger and bigger and for me, I really feel like I'm being held under water and I have to do something to, to snap it back into reality. A few hours later, she makes an announcement to Sarah and not even she can change her mind. Now Cassie wants to leave two days earlier to go to Bangkok with Christy. I mean, I just have to think that, you know, probably when I'm back, I'll be thinking, I wish I, I, wish I was in a monastery. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because that's always the way. When you get back, you think, Shit. Right, you baby girl. Mm. You'll be all right, though. Yeah, always am, aren't I? Christy has decided to go with Cassie to Bangkok. He didn't want to tell us why. There are just two days left when Cassie and Christy catch the bus to Bangkok. I spoke to her and I threw everything at her and I played with her head. She was crying and she still went. Now, maybe we didn't see some hidden strength. Maybe she has got what it takes. I hope so. 
The reason why I didn't go with Chrissy and Cassie, it's just not a good idea to go out with three ex-heroin addicts when you've just detoxed. There is a chance of relapse and I only had two days left. And I thought, well, what's the point? We arranged to meet them at the airport in two days' time. Nobody's sure if they'll make it. As the end of her treatment approaches, Sarah is taken on a tour of the monastery by drug worker Nick. Oh, it's Richards! Right, smile. That's perfect. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Oh, I can't wait to get these pyjamas off. Yeah, not long now. Right? I think there should be some sort of ritual where you actually, um, at the end, you burn your pyjamas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you get a sense of feeling when you come here. I've learnt a lot. You know, I've realised that... You know, the world is beautiful and there's, there's a lot in the world and being a junkie and being a heroin addict... You're just wasting your life. There's so much, like, you come here and you see all this and... Yet yeah, there's so much, there's so much out there and, you know, I just... I don't want to waste any more time. Muggy today, isn't it? Mm. Muggy every day. <laughs> today is the 28th day since Sarah, Cassie, and Christy came to the monastery. At first, Sarah found it difficult to vomit and had a painful withdrawal. But of the three people brought out by East West Detox, only she has lasted the course. I can't wait, because uh, I just want to get back into the 21st century and I want to get back into the real world. I need a drink. I know that's really bad, but I've never had a problem with drink, so I do need a drink. Just like, you know, triple vodka and coke or something. Um. Have they got my passport? Don't worry about that, just get yourself together. <laughs> Hello, hands. Oh, like, sorry. You look like better than... Do I? <clears throat> Do I look different? No, I look more healthy. Do you feel confident? I do. Time to go. Right. Go mm. make it, mate. Look after yourself. I'll email you, yeah? yeah. Natalie. Mm -hmm. She's my only redhead. <laughs> you take care. You take care. I and will. Be strong. Keep in contact. Yeah, I will, yeah. definitely. You'll be fine. All right, then. Yeah. I will. Take care of yourself. Yeah, I will. Take care, everyone, all right? Oh. Oh, that's a happy ending. I'm at the airport. I'm waiting for Cassie and Chrissy at the moment. They've literally got 15 minutes before we all board. So they're cutting it fine. I, I hope they didn't oversleep. Imagine that. Couldn't have been anywhere else, because she was brushing her hair. <laughs> Cassie! 
Hey! They go mad in there. Five minutes and we've reached such a oh, nose. Oh. Did you have a good time? Did we? Well, did I bet we? you did. Uh, oh, good. Sounds good. Good, I'm glad you had a good time. Where are we? You know? Over there. We thought that the rest of their rehabilitation would be straightforward, that the hard bit was over. But the real world will prove more difficult to adjust to than anyone had anticipated. A week after we get back, we meet up with Cassie in central London. She doesn't regret leaving the monastery early. I'm glad I went to Bangkok for those couple of days. I don't care what anyone says. And I knew I'd be fine anyway. It was just nice to get out, because otherwise I would have still come back straight into, you know, London, big London, having come from, like, a prison. On her return to London, she found that Paul hadn't given up drugs at all. She knows she's now more at risk than ever. Well, when I got back, I had... I did I admit I had a little bit on a pipe. I think to move on, I'm going to have to leave Paul, yeah. I mean, it's just something I'm going to have to deal with and get on with and do. It will be another 18 months before we see Cassie again. We had no idea what was going to happen to her. After returning to England, Sarah decided to leave Reading behind and join her parents in Japan, planning to work again as a translator. It was nice to be back in Japan to use my Japanese and just get a feel of who I was again, really, I suppose. But things didn't go to plan. I'd lost my confidence and I couldn't get myself together in Tokyo. I just felt that it was time that, you know, I should come back and face everything that I had f***ed up. Nine months later, she called to say she was nearer than we thought. Everybody, can you follow the folder? Do not lose me and follow me. Uh, we are going uh, to Westminster Abbey, past the Houses of Parliament and Big Ben. I've been working for an English language school, taking students to London. It's a summer job, but I really enjoy it. At the moment, I'm living in Cambridge. The monastery was a beginning for me. You know, I remember the monks telling me this is the start of, you know, your, ste your stepping stone, Sarah. And I've always kept that thought in my head. I sit and I think to myself, oh, God, you know, if I'd never got into drugs, I'd probably be on about £50,000 a year now and I'd be in London, working, successful, travelling all over the world and, you know, it, it really, it tears me apart what I've done. It's all about regaining yourself and getting yourself back. And I think that, you know, that is the most, just most difficult bit at all, you know, about it. You know, it's like being born again. I lose faith some days. Some days I think, oh, God, you know, you know, I'm not, I, I can't, you know. Some days I lose a lot of faith. But you just have to get on with it and you have to keep going. There's no other way forward, really. Mm. And, you know, that drive, you know, I like that. I like to keep going and, you know, get back on my feet, well, f*** you, and just keep going, you know? I know that I've still got so much more work to do on myself. But, you know, 
At least I'm doing it and I'm getting there. It's all good. It's all gravy. For another 18 months, Cassie said she didn't feel ready to talk again. We were worried that she might be hiding something. Then she agreed to meet up at her new home outside London. Her life had taken the most unexpected turn of all. It got to a stage where I just had to change what I was doing in life. Decided to go away with a couple of friends, old friends that I've had for years. And I met someone while I was out there who came from around this area. And um, we just got on really well. The main thing that sorted me out was seeing a different life, I'd say. Was seeing a different life of what life should have been like for someone my age. I needed to be with people who were nothing to do with drugs. The monastery may have helped her get clean, but Cassie seems to have found her peace not in spirituality, but in the one thing she hadn't known since her teens normality. Cassie's finally in a place she thought she'd never be. She has a proper relationship with her son after all these years, and a daughter she dotes upon. But that doesn't mean the kids will have it easy. When my children are older, I'll tell them that I had a very difficult time um, when I was younger, but that I learned a lot from it. And you can't get any, <laughs> get away with anything with me now. <laughs> That's what I tell them. I'm going to bath. Say bye bye toys. Bye bye. That's it. Bye bye toys. <laughs> Jake, I'm going to go to the bath, alright? Okay.